So a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend has told me you go to Rabbi Mo, you know, uh-uh, illegal. The person who was allowed by Yahweh, look, look at verse 38. I sent you to reap that which you have not labored, meaning I sent, who sent? Yeshua sent. So is it, is it legal? Yes. yes. Is it lawful? Yes. Yes, why? <coughs> Who's doing the sending? Yeshua. Yeshua. One day Yeshua, should Yeshua tarry, sent, will send someone here to enter into my labor, and they haven't done diddly squat. But I'll be glad because he'll move, he might move me into someone else's labor, and I didn't do a diddly squat over there. What happens if he moves me into Israel? And I take over the Tel Aviv congregation with 100 people. What did I do? Nothing. I didn't do anything, but he moved me into their labor. Yeah. You follow me? That's the way the kingdom works. Yeah. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. And right now, Yahweh may be doing these things. Getting people ready to lawfully enter your ministry. <coughs> Others have labored, but I have sent you to enter their labors, meaning to, 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 to be in charge as they were once in charge. If the reaper, yep. notice, the one who comes into an existing ministry lawfully is not doing any sowing, right? What is he doing? Reaping. Exclusively reaping. Yeah. Why? Because the one who's doing all the sowing is no more in the picture. Right. You with me? So another lawful point of entry is when someone's been tested where? In team ministry or groundbreaking ministry, Yahshua raises them up, sends them into a field where all they got to do is reap and do no sowing. What a, what a mechaia. Yeah. Yeah. What a mechaia. Can you imagine? I wish that I had inherited a congregation of 100 with a budget of $10,000 a week. I wish. It's not happening. But the person that Yahweh sends into my place one day, as he moves me into someone else's labor, may just inherit that kind of a situation. And they're coming into a, a unique reaping situation. How much sowing do they have to do? And see, that's a reward for faithfulness. When Yahweh moves someone else on, to either join a team ministry or a groundbreaking ministry, two other lawful points of entry, that leaves a vacancy, but because you've been faithful, he fills that vacancy with you, and he gives you a carte blanche, because all you'll be doing for the next 10 years is reaping the hard labor of the one who you were faithful to. Yeah. Mm. That's a good word for somebody. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. If you're sleeping, just wave your hand. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. I am so tired of dead preachers preaching dead sermons to dead congregations. It's time we extend the service. It's time we extend the music. It's time we extend the preaching. It's time that we live and move and have our very being in the house of Yahweh with the people of Yahweh. I'm not worried about clock. I'm not worried about beat the clock. I'm more inspired to kill the clock. Kill the clock. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Little Seymour, William Seymour of Azusa Street, when the Ruach HaKodesh was reintroduced to the Kehillah in the early 1900s, how was the, how was the Ruach reintroduced to the Kehillah? A little black man sitting in a corner, didn't speak, didn't move, sat behind a shoebox and waited 12, 24 7 until the Ruach came and said, We're not leaving, we're tarrying. We're not leaving. I don't care about home, business, spaghetti, kosher, non shopping, baby, oh, we're not leaving. And Azusa Street revival is now history. And for the first time in 2,000 years, people started speaking and speaking in tongues and prophesying because little William Seymour refused to move and didn't worry about the clock. I said all that to say this. There's good news. We got another fort. No, I'm kidding. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. The reaper reaps. He does very little sowing. He's been counted faithful and sent by Yeshua, and he now becomes accountable for the work. If the reaper is humble, if the reaper is faithful, both the sower and the reaper rejoice together. The sower who's being moved on, the reaper who is entering that man's labor where he's done no work. Listen, this, this kind of takeover, you, are you with me when I say takeover, you understand? Mm -hmm. Entering into another man's ministry where you, all you do is reaping the rewards of his work, okay? His faithfulness, because you were faithful in another place. This ministry... This inheriting legal point of entry is best exemplified and entered through personal mentoring. How did Kifa take over for Yeshua? Personal mentoring. 
how did how did in Ephesus the messianic assembly in Ephesus uh, how did how did Timothy take over from Rav Shaul my son in the faith personal mentoring personal my son in the faith how did Titus take over for the messianic assembly in Crete even though the Cretans used to say oh you're just a bunch of heathen yeah 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 how did Titus take over the Messianic Assembly? Who started the Messianic Assembly in Crete? Rav Shaul. But who took over? Titus. Why? Personal mentoring. You with me? The way Yahweh allows a legal entry for one to enter a ministry where all they do is reap and they don't have to do any of the hard work, any of the sowing, is by personal mentoring. Either if you are called to take over someone else's ministry and put in their place and enter a season of reaping, you must first see to it that you are willing to be mentored by that individual. If you've been faithfully allowed yourself to be mentored, you are a candidate when Yahshua sends you to enter that ministry. It was her ministry, now it's yours. It was his ministry, now it's yours. They did all the calls, they did all the mailings, they did all the emails, and all you do is come bring your Bible and preach. Amen? What a Mechaya. What a Mechaya. But that's done best through personal mentoring. Elisha was mentored by Elisha. Eliyahu. Yehoshua was mentored by Moshe Rabbeinu. Yohanan was mentored by Yeshua. Even Yeshua, listen, this is going to blow you away as we close. First close. Even Yeshua, <laughs> I did that one, I'm sorry. Second close. Even Yeshua had to live by this principle that he's calling you to live by. He and whose, whose ministry did he enter? Thank you. Yochanan HaMabil. Not just the fathers. John the Baptist. He said, he said, wait a second. Mashiach, Messiah, I'm not worthy to unloose the shoes of your sandals. For, for you, are, you were before me because you are the eternal I am. And what Yeshua was saying. Allow it to be so for now. Mm. Mm. For in so doing, we shall fulfill all righteousness. Mm. What righteousness? Legal entry into Yohanan's ministry. His ministry was a baptism unto repentance. And Yeshua would bring the solution to repentant sinners. And for Yeshua to enter Yohanan's ministry, he said, put me down in the Yardin. Put me down in the Jordan. Because Yohanan HaMadbil... Even I to take over your ministry, to cry to Israel for repentance, to return to the Yahweh of their fathers, I must enter lawfully and let me go down into the waters of Mikvah, and so we shall fulfill all righteousness. In other words, I could enter my ministry as Messiah lawfully. Sprinkle that, oh, sprinkle that, dunk me, dunk me, Mikvah me. You're not a, you're a prophet, you're not a religious figure, you're a prophet. Put me all the way in. Because as soon as you do, I'm coming out into my ministry and your ministry. And you won't be around for long because your head's going to be removed in a few months. Even Yeshua, through humility, before he could take over the call to Israel to cry out for repentance, had to go into the waters of Mikvah. Someone's enjoying this. Someone's going to get the tape. And someone is getting edified this morning. Brothers and sisters, lawful entry. If Yeshua had to enter lawfully, how much more you and I? Huh? If he had to be mikvah by the one who was lesser, he said, and, 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 and Yochanan said, I, I must decrease so that he can increase. Amen? What does it mean to increase? He's coming to take over the ministry, the call to Israel for repentance. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. As we close, final close. Don't laugh, please. This entry, listen, this entry of taking over another man's work is the most fruitful, because the fruit's automatically coming. Even before you get there, 
It's already coming. The fruit is being produced. But it is also the most vulnerable to pride, greed, innuendo, and misgivings of all over motives. S period, A period, tan will not break new ground, will not be part of a team. So what he does is he will come after a man and puff him up with pride and arrogance, thinking that what he is reaping is his work. When it's not, it's another man's work. Hallelujah. That's right. And so when you enter another man or another woman's ministry with free license and free authority from Yeshua, be, have, be fully clothed with the armor of Yahweh. Oh, yeah. Fully clothed. Because when you, you could start thinking that all this reaping I'm doing, I must be special. I mean, since I got here, all I've been doing is reaping. Souls, disciples, Ephraim's coming to know who he is. Jews are getting saved. The congregation's growing. My ministry... And so we get easily get vulnerable to being arrogant, prideful, and puffed up, and forgetting that we did no labor. Mm -hmm. yep. we just Yahweh allowed you to join that person in the team, or to even take over that person's ministry. Not because you're special, or I'm special, because we were allowed by Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You with me? So it's the most vulnerable, and Satan is coming after those who are called to enter into another's labor. Why? Because Satan is not part of a team. He, he's not willing to be part of a team. So Satan doesn't want to mess with it. Satan is not willing to break ground for Yeshua. <laughs> How many know what I'm talking about? So what Satan, it's easy for him to find a puffed up servant that he can control who's coming in to rescue someone else or take over their ministry. Legal takeover. Yeah. Be careful. If Yahweh is calling you and entrusting you with someone else's work where you've done no labor and you're all going all you're gonna do is reap, be careful. You're a prime candidate to be to be attacked with Satan, by Satan with pride. Amen? Amen? But a groundbreaker doesn't have that. A groundbreaker knows what it's like to break his back, breaking new ground. Amen? Yeah. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. This kind of entry is most susceptible to division and split. Okay? When another rabbi from out of town comes into the work and believes that he's sent there to take over and he's sent there to run things, there's a problem. Because if even if he is sent there to eventually take over the work, if he's not careful and he doesn't guard his house, what does the word say in Mishlei? <laughs> Mishlei 4. Guard your heart with all diligence for out of it proceed the issues of life. And so this is the most honored position when you've proven yourself faithful in team ministry, lawful entry, when you've proven yourself faithful in groundbreaking ministry, lawful entry, he's now entrusting you with the fruits of another where you bestowed no labor, but this candidate must be the most careful not to allow Satan to enter and divide. Because if someone were to come here, and I close with, this is the final close, honestly, if someone were to come here and be the new rabbi, you know the first thing that would happen? And even if they were sent by Yahweh to be the new rabbi, you know the first thing that would happen? All y'all would start getting really critical and judgmental. Well, Moshe didn't do it that way. That's right. We never did it that way. And then the new rabbi would say, well, I'm in charge. And I'm, I don't care what Moshe did. And so right away he gets puffed up. He hasn't put any labor. He hasn't scratched the dirt. He hasn't born the heat of the day. He's just been blessed by Yahweh to enter into another man's work, and he can get very, very puffed up. The people can turn against him, and division, and split, and so forth can take place. It's a very dangerous position, and yet the highest rewarded position of lawful entry, but the most dangerous. You with me? These are the three areas of lawful entry. Amen? Team, Baruch Hashem Yahweh, groundbreaking, and entering into the labor of another. Whatever you do, whatever of these three callings you are called to, make sure you enter lawfully. Okay? You do not want to be hindering lawful entry, neither do you want to be participating in, law, in unlawful entry. I'll say that again. You do not want to participate in unlawful entry, and neither do you want to hinder lawful entry to make the other person become unlawful in injury. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. 
So make double sure, brothers and sisters. Make sure that you are part of the solution and not part of the problem where you could illegally enter a ministry of Yahweh or cause others to fall and illegally enter a ministry. Make sure you are not an obstacle. Make sure you are part of the solution of lawful entry. Father, we thank you and we praise you, Abba, for the goodness you've given us here this morning, the goodness of your word, Abba, for your word is settled forever in heaven. And Father, we thank you this day for those who have come with ears to hear and eyes to see into the Ruach. And Father, we thank you that according to your son in Yohanan 4, who has shown us clearly today the three points of lawful entry. Team, groundbreaking, work, and entering into the labor where we have done no laboring, only reaping of another man's work. And so Father, those of us this morning who have, who have in some way been obstacles, who have some way entered the ministry unlawfully, or holding back others who seek to enter lawfully. Father, that your goodness would come upon them this morning. Your mercy would follow them all the days of their life. And Father, those who are seeking or who have entered unlawfully by comparison, by other unlawful methods, would repent and be on the right path with you this day. Father, you have called all your, all your ministers to enter. And Father, for the singles and for the new believers, that they would find themselves the team that you've placed them on and serve that team and be found faithful in that team because the one in that team who reaps and the one who sows both rejoice as one together in the fruits of eternal life. As it is written, one plants, one waters, but Elohim gives the increase. And so, Father, I pray that every individual here this morning would find their place in a team here at B'nai Yeshua. Or as a groundbreaker for the kingdom being restored to Israel under our covering at B'nai Yeshua. Or even those, Father, that are being prepared right now to take another man's ministry with gladness, with joy, and not with nefarious motives. And so, Father, in Yeshua's name, we thank you that everyone here this morning is seeing the clarity of your purpose, seeing the clarity of your calling, and seeing the clarity of what you have destined and ordained for your children, that everyone find the legal entry point everyone minister the good news as they find a legal entry point into the ministry. And Father, those who have been participating in unlawful entry or, or causing others to enter unlawfully through gossip, complaining, lack of commitment, that this day, Father, that there would be new seeds of righteousness sown in the hearts of your people, Israel. Well, everyone standing, please. Everyone standing, please. To the Rabbah Vinu Like our fathers had done Brow sweating from the heat of the sun And the salty air The damage your skin 